Many real-world systems can be represented as networks including biological networks. Networks are found in biological systems of varying scales, from evolutionary tree of life, ecological networks, to expression networks and regulatory networks. Can you name any other biological phenomena that can be represented as a network? Protein or metabolic interactions in a cell can be represented also as a graph or a network. In biological networks, nodes and edges can represent different things. Node can be protein, peptide, or non-protein biomolecules. Edges can be any biological relationship, such as interaction, regulation, or transformation. One can construct bipartite or tripartite networks or graphs, for instance, between genes, proteins, and drugs. Do you recall the definition of bipartite graph? Protein-protein interaction network, transcriptional regulatory network, and metabolic network have been studied and their structural properties are reported to be similar. The observed properties are not uh, in agreement with traditional random graph models for complex networks. Their degree distribution follows a power law degree distribution, basically rich get uh, richer. They have a small average shortest path length. They are very resilient and have a strong resistance to failure on random attacks, but vulnerable to targeted attack. They have hierarchical modularity and a few central nodes. And also, as we mentioned earlier, it has been observed that in biological networks, more central nodes cannot be done without it. The graph shown here is protein-protein interaction network or PPI, and has been constructed using three different public databases. This protein interaction network has more than 1,500 proteins and 337,000 interactions. PPI are typically modeled as undirected graphs, in which nodes represent proteins and edges represent interactions. The frequency of proteins having interaction with exactly k other proteins follows a power law. PPI networks exhibit the small world phenomena. One can reach any node within a small number of hops, usually four or five hops. Although these networks are very sparse, it's very hard to be studied without breaking them into smaller pieces. Biological networks are modular. Therefore, one can try to find highly clustered subgraph of the biological network to get a high-level overview of it. This also allows us to predict unknown gene or protein functions based on its communities. Diverse algorithms and methods range from simple k-mean clustering to Markov chain-based models have been suggested in literature to find these modules and community in a complex network. One of the main challenges in community detection is the number of communities. Most of these methods have set of parameters that needs to be set before running them. Changing the exact value of these parameters affect the number of detected communities or module, even if it has not been asked explicitly. For instance, what's shown here is a module of the PPI network found by MCL method. Many of genes here are known to belong to a particular biological pathway. As another example of biological networks here, we have drug-drug interaction network. This network has been reconstructed based on similarity of effect of each drug on set of genes. This type of network is very useful in drug repurposing. Reconstruction of biological networks directly from experimental data using statistical or machine learning approaches has received significant attention in last decade. There is a wide variety of different approaches available that can be used to infer biological networks from experimental data. Approaches employed include Bayesian networks, autoregressive models, correlation-based, mutual information-based models, clustering techniques, or differential equation models. 
Most of these methods use perturbation to validate the reconstructed network. This can be performed by removing a node, gene, protein, or metabolite from a system or by preventing interaction among particular ones. Biological networks are very complex and diverse, so we cannot analyze them only by relying on statistical-based methods. In the remaining part of this course, you will learn about new ways of studying and exploring such a complex networks.